I will uh, try to limit getting lost on the way to the hostel to only an hour today. <laughs> I'm the mad traveler. I'm traveling yeah, the world, the and this is my adventure. <laughs> Walking around Munich can be kind of confusing, but the really interesting stuff is around Marienplatz. You've got some interesting buildings and structures, as well as a really cool old new town hall. But the coolest parts of the city really are the churches. Apparently that is the devil's footprint. All right, let's go underneath. I'm dying, so let's get something to eat. It, I believe, which I found out after I ordered, is pig's stomach. And it's got mustard on it, because apparently that's what you should put on that. <laughs> the top is very crunchy, rough on your mouth. And it looks a lot more juicy than it is, actually. It's kind of like if dark meat and white meat had a baby. What this would taste like. It's not as dry as white, not as, uh, Juicy fatty star. Just weird. It's like three different tastes in one. You can see down there, there, at the top. It doesn't taste horrible, but it doesn't taste amazing. Look at this weird building in front of me where I'm finishing up my lovely pig stomach. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I saw it in some photo that says it's famous or important. Welcome to BMW World. It's one of the coolest buildings I have ever seen. And it's full of Nazi mobiles. I mean cars, 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 cars. That's where you can go and uh, pick up the BMW that you purchased. I'm assuming this guy is explaining to them why their very expensive car requires so much maintenance. It has a shit build quality overall. And apparently you can bring dogs in here. I wonder if they have a BMW cleaner comes around to clean up after them. What are you doing in here? And the museum is this bowl thing. <laughs> and it's full of tons of cars. Basically a car enthusiast's wet dream. Then there's this weird ball thing. But don't forget the first thing they ever made was an airplane engine. And that's why they are Bavarian Motor Works. Let's skip some of the history. If you ever want to feel comfortable sitting in or driving a BMW again, don't read the section on forced labor during World War II. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. And the tour ends with the brain of BMW. All right, done with BMW and uh, their really cool indoctrination experience. It, it was really cool, you should definitely come check it out. But uh, <laughs> right about now, I kind of feel like going and buying a, a Ford Mustang. <laughs> All right, so I'm on my way now to, um, all right, so I'm on my way now to a beer hall. The I believe it's a Hofbrau one, the really famous one in Munich, and that should be pretty fun. All right, so it looks like we finally made it here, and some people have had a little bit too much to drink already. So it looks like a fun time. Let's go in. So this is the brew hall. It's a lot different than I thought it was gonna be. Pretzelmation. Cheers and Jeremy say Brost. Brost. Very tasty. Brost. Oh, 
Okay, so they stopped serving beer at 11.30 in the most famous beer hall in the world. What the hell's up with that? Now we gotta go, and everyone's looking at me. <laughs> now we gotta go and find somewhere else to have a few beers. The next day, I tour what will be one of the most impressive palaces I have ever seen, with much of it significantly nicer than the Palace of Versailles. You must come to the Residence Museum if you visit Munich. And certainly, don't forget to look up. And it wouldn't be a palace without jewels. Now if you come, expect to spend hours inside. But I gotta say, it's worth it. I always say Germans are 20% more hippie than America. And look at these vegans protesting outside of the McDonald's. I almost want to buy them a cheeseburger and some fries. Now it's time to see what man can do to man. The camp itself uh, was mainly actually a collection and distribution camp where they would uh, take in a lot of workers or prisoners, or slaves, whatever, and distribute them out to do things like work in the munitions factories and so on. But they also did uh, experiments on them here, medical experiments, mainly for hypothermia and uh, in marine environments, high altitude and uh, things of that nature. One of the companies they mentioned that the prisoners here worked for include none other than BMW. Now we're gonna walk down here and go to the uh, crematorium because even though this wasn't an extermination camp per se, you know, they still had all the facilities to get rid of people. This is the original crematorium that they built to dispose of uh, the uh, dead prisoners before they had to expand it into this building. And here's apparently the uh, showers where they would gas people. Really, really eerie. Here, though, apparently the showers were never uh, used. It's uh, really eerie to think about that you're walking where thousands of dead bodies were brought to be burned, and in the camp, thousands of people were worked to death. And that that just happened 70 years ago. <laughs> and the only difference is a change in government, I guess. It's really creepy. But now let's change the tune a bit and recap on my experience in Munich. When I watched this video, it seems like I really loved Munich, but I did not. I found it to be rather bland and boring. Most of the city is not terribly special or interesting, and the nightlife was not what I expected it to be. I thought that I'd be coming to a big party city where there would be lots and lots of stuff to do during the day and night, but I was mistaken. Part of this is because it's not during Oktoberfest, and part of this is because I had to stay in a hotel-style hostel far from the city center. But much of this is due simply to the city itself. Though it has its moments, it really is just a big industrial city lacking in the charm that I had come to expect from many German cities. However, I'll be back. But it's time now to explain the title of this video. The night out drinking was a much bigger night than I showed in the video. I stopped recording after the Hofbrau house, but the night did not end there. We found some really great pubs throughout the city and had a really good time. Then when those closed, on the way home, we ran into a group of people that took us to a really cool nightclub. Then we start dancing together, and really it's just the perfect night with the perfect person. Until it wasn't. 
I later found out that prescription back pain pills taken at the club were the cause of the ensuing chaos, but that hardly matters now. The last 30 minutes of the night involved a profession of true love directed at me combined with a movie style last kiss, if you will, violence in the form of me being punched repeatedly, my passport being purposefully taken and damaged, and one crying, hysterical female. If this happened to me now, I would probably brush it off. But at the time, this was the first time I had gone out on the town with a girl I just met in a hostel while traveling alone in Europe. Needless to say, I was a bit traumatized. <laughs> it would wear off, that's true, but not for a while. For now, no more American girls. Next up, Disneyland Castle and trying to bring back the cheer. Wait, don't go just yet. Make sure to hit that big subscribe button below so you can follow the journey. Tell me what you think about the video in the comments, and if you liked it, hit the like button and give me a thumbs up.